Welcome back everybody. So um, up at the property again and uh, it's a little hot so we're taking a little break down here by the creek. Thought I'd uh, try and do a quick little video um, about purchasing property. Um, you know to do this kind of stuff. There's a lot of us that are out there either dreaming about doing it uh, in the initial phases of doing it, have bought a piece of property, trying to plan everything out. Um, so I thought I'd do a quick little video about uh, some of the stuff that uh, we did, um, and uh, maybe you'll be able to pick something out of it that'll help you. So probably like most people, we have been thinking about this for you know a long time. Um, it's uh, kind of always been uh, on the wish list of, hey, I'd love to buy a piece of property for retirement, uh, build a cabin, do something. Um, you know, even if we were just buying a piece of property to camp on for, you know, 10 or 15 years until we were able to afford to uh, build a cabin or you know whatever at least we'd own the property and be kind of moving forward come up with a plan um so that was kind of like the the dream phase of it um 2020 um we uh started to kind of move forward and and start looking for a piece of property um and that was uh you know the internet makes it all easy. Uh, you can hop on Zillow, uh, Realtor.com, Craigslist. You know, it all kind of depends on what you're what you're looking for. Um, and we started looking at different areas, uh, different areas that uh, that you know we liked because um, we hadn't really made a decision on what part of. Uh, Arizona there's a few different mountainous regions um, I guess you'd say uh, where there's pine trees and beautiful like this uh, that we were considering um, as a kid I uh, I spent a lot of time as a kid up in the White Mountains uh, Pine Top Lakeside Sholo area of Arizona so that was uh, one of the initial thoughts uh, back when we were in the dreaming phase before we started getting anywhere close to serious um, and uh, as the years progressed the, the type of stuff that we like doing and uh, the places we like being led us you know more over here into the Bradshaws um, we looked uh, of course around here which is uh, just south of Prescott up in the Bradshaws um, and we looked up at Crown King, which is uh, just another beautiful area. Um, one of the reasons why we uh, chose those places because we like to prospect, and that's what uh, actually got us. Uh, that's how we kind of discovered this area the first time, is uh, coming up to the Lynx Creek, Lynx Lake area. We were doing some prospecting down in the panning only area down there, so it was. Uh, you know we started coming up in here uh, more and more and kind of fell in love with this this particular part of Arizona and uh, so that's how kind of the dream began about being up here so um, we, uh, we started looking pretty heavy like I said in 2020 looking online um, and we were making trips up here to kind of drive around and go look at the different lots that we found um, and uh, one thing that we found out is uh, stuff that you find on the internet might already be sold or people have looked at it uh, and uh, I'm not a huge fan of realtors anyways so that just made it kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt um, but uh, started looking figuring out what we wanted um, you know see a couple of piece of properties, see what they had listed, uh, drive up, come and look at those piece of properties, even though some of them were under contract, some, you know, they, you know, had a few offers on. 
but we were at least narrowing down the things that you know we wanted, the things that we had to have, the things that would make it better, and started building a a, a good picture of what the property was worth with different features um, so that we had a better idea of, of what we were looking for and I'd, I'd highly recommend anybody that uh, take a couple months and do that um, so that you can start kind of dialing in what you're actually trying to buy um, we uh, we knew that we wanted to be up in the mountains um, we knew we wanted to be down a dirt road and not in Prescott. Um, and uh, so we were able to narrow down our, our search areas um, and uh, start really focusing on what was important. And as we came across properties, we developed a list of, you know, we want this, that, the other thing. Um, and then everything else was kind of gravy, like um, the creek, which we're sitting on now, was kind of like a, I would love to have it, but it's not a deal breaker. Um, we wanted to be somewhere south of Prescott, um, up in the mountains, and um, we had some specific areas out here. Uh, we had a, you know, certain elevation that we were actually looking for we wanted to be above the 6500 foot mark we're about 7,000 right here um, in the the size of the property uh, was one of the things that ended up being a deal breaker for us we wanted something that was at a minimum an acre um, and even some of the acre lots that we looked at were because of development, other lots, uh, you know, people find the best spot, especially in some of these mountainous areas. You get two one acre lots next to each other. Well, the, the best spot to build a house um, for both of those lots might be, you know, end up with both of those houses being 20 feet apart from each other. So. Um, something to take into consideration and we, we had to look at we, we had to look at uh, not only the lot that was for sale but the lot that was next door if it was vacant or if it already had uh, 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 a house or structure built on it and kind of try and best guess what they were going to be doing if if it was vacant you know or if we could uh, you know try and figure out a way to buy that one or you know whatever so we were trying to figure out all the angles um, and then when we were looking at pieces of property we were trying to find people local in the area that uh, um, you know knew something about the area a um, lot of a lot of just research uh, out here you know obviously this is fairly off-grid um, we do have power lines that run right next to our uh, our property and I guess there's phone and internet too is what I understand I see the boxes around as well um, but uh, power being close by was semi important to us uh, don't want to run a generator all the time didn't really want to try and set up a complete off-grid uh, solar system uh, right out the gate um, but we knew that uh, we were going to have to put in septic and drill a well or haul water. Um, so, you know, trying to trying to figure all that stuff out and how the logistics of doing that, the costs of doing that in the particular area that we were looking for, um, you know, were important. That was super important. Um, because that all comes down to how much money you can spend on the property or what your uh, your final cost is going to be by the time you've you know made the improvements to the lot got a structure up you know if uh, septic's going to cost you fifty thousand dollars to put in because it's uh, going to be a struggle on the lot that you picked uh, you might have gotten a great deal on the lot but uh, you lose it in the long run trying to 
be able to build on the lot. Um, and we, uh, we learned a lot about that as we were going along. We were looking at some lots that uh, the more we looked at them and tried to figure out how you did it, um, we discovered why they were still vacant because they were going to be extremely expensive to build. Um, the lot was priced right in our price range, but uh, building on it would have been, um, if we didn't identify those costs up front, start looking at them, it would have uh, probably been a heartbreaking situation. It would have brought everything to a stop. Um, so, you know, I, you really got to do your research and look into that kind of stuff. Um, also trying to talk to the locals is actually how we, uh, came across this lot. Um, we were looking at a different lot, um, uh, about three quarters of a mile away from here. Um, and uh, actually I had the drone out. Uh, I was over flying the lot, trying to, uh, you know, get a better picture of, you know, what it looked like. It was, uh, it, uh, as it turns out, that lot would have been um, fairly hard to build on. Um, it also had a creek, uh, but uh, the creek would have been prohibitive to uh, septic system You've and stuff mail. like that. It would have kind of screwed all that up. But uh, as I'm out walking the lot, lot, stomping all over it, um, guy drives by in a backhoe. Um, and if you're ever out looking at a lot and a guy is driving by in a backhoe, always stop, stop and talk to him. Because uh, more than likely that guy probably knows everything that you need to know about that particular area, um, costs associated. Um, just so happened this guy installs septic systems out here so he was able to give me a good uh, rough cost on installing the septic system on that lot was able to give me a good idea of how deep i'd have to drill on that lot for water and in the general area um and uh most valuable in information we got while we were looking um he actually directed us to this lot um uh, and uh he happened to own it, was, uh, had been kicking around the idea of selling it. Um, I don't know, uh, my feeling is he probably picked me because I was uh, asking a bunch of uh, semi-intelligent questions, seemed like I know what I was talking about. Maybe he liked me, whatever. And uh, we ended up buying this lot off of him. Um, and bonus was, is uh, we got a lot of our wish list off of this lot. Um, not just the must-haves, which were the pine trees and the elevation and the lot size, but uh, the house pad was started up on the top. Um, the road was cut in up to the house pad. Septic system was installed. Um, there's great spacing. We are bordered by road. Uh, on most of the sides in the lot. The one lot that we are um, bordering up against, they have built their house on the complete other side of their lot. So they're as far away from us as uh, probably could possibly be. Um, and we ended up meeting them and they're awesome people. They're uh, friends of ours now. Um, so everything just kind of worked out. Um, so that's kind of like what we went through um, and, uh, another thing is we didn't go through a realtor. Um, don't be afraid to, as you're out looking at lots, if you can identify a place that's vacant, looks like it's been vacant. Um, you can hop on the county's, uh, website, the assessor's office. You can usually look up the person, um, be respectful. That's, uh, one thing that I would say. Uh, you can look up the person, maybe be respectful, maybe reach out and say, hey, we're out looking for a uh, uh, piece of property out in that area. We saw this lot. We looked you up. We're interested, you know, we're curious if you guys are interested in sell. I get a ton of phone calls of people wanting to buy property, um, houses and stuff. Uh, just the spam phone calls annoys the living hell out of me. Um, so... 
I'm not a huge fan of cold calling people like that, but you know, um, something like that, it's a little different than uh, these spam calls that people are getting. So, you know, um, you know, maybe that's an option as well. You can look that kind of stuff up. You can also look up in the area through the county websites and stuff, state websites. Um, I know here in Arizona, you can look up an area and figure out the depth of the wells in the area if you're trying to figure that out. Um, and that usually gives you the company who drilled it, when they drilled it. Um, so that's some good references. You can look in an area, see if one company's been drilling most of the wells. Uh, if there's two, three companies, you can, you know, call all of them and uh, at least get a quote. Um, you know, start coming up with some of those costs. Um, if you are spending a bunch of time out here, one thing that you will notice is there is a lot of uh, what I like to call broken dreams properties uh, where there's foundations or half finished cabins that are falling down that were started in the 80s, the 90s, early 2000s. Um, and uh, people didn't really have a plan going into it and maybe they ran out of money, ran out of financing, personal hardship, uh, you know, a divorce, you know, whatever. Um, those pieces of property um, might be good ones to pick up. Uh, and some of those structures are just complete teardowns. Um, but main thing is I don't want you to end up in that uh, in that boat where you've gone out and spent a bunch of money uh, getting a structure put up um, and uh, get stalled out before the structure can withstand the weather um, and uh, next thing you know you're you know hundred and fifty thousand dollars into something and uh, you have to stop for five six years and when you come back the you know the structure has to be tore down start over and you and you're out that you know 100 grand or whatever um so definitely get a plan together before you start building before you break ground we were planning all along um once we decided to really push forward with it uh we had started to look for uh the house that we want, the, the floor plan that we want, the design that we want, um, and uh, we fell in love with one particular one, that's actually what we're working on building here, um, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk about maybe all that stuff in, a, in another video, um, but uh, if you guys got any questions, comment down below, um, follow along on our journey. Uh, find out if we uh, get to the finish line of this thing I think we've come up with a good plan I think we're all committed um, uh, we've definitely got some obstacles my nemesis rock is back here um, I'm actually taking a break from that thing this weekend getting some other stuff done uh, but uh, you know definitely like subscribe uh, keep checking back with us and uh, see what's going on thanks